Hi, this is Chris Pontius. You're watching Talk Dupe with Ryan. Hey, this is Fafa Pico. You're watching Talk Dupe with Ryan. <laughs> what is going on, guys? Welcome back to another episode of Talk Dupe with Ryan. And today, um, me and Kira here will be filming the first episode of Talk Dupe with Ryan um, ever since the match recap from that Orlando game. I know you guys haven't seen me for a while. I decided to morph this into a season recap plus 2018 look in. So it's a combo of both. If you know what I mean, and um, we'll dive right into it. Um, normally, if you're new to the channel, I would start off with an injury report. What that's when the season gets underway. I will tell you who is injured, and uh, I'll provide look-ins on what a normal to talk to with Ryan episode looks like as we go through the video. Because I know a lot of you guys are new, new or newer viewers, so I just want to get that straightened out. First thing, transfers. Now. Ernie and Jay Sugarman and Jim, they've all been kind of hesitant to put out some money. Um, Corey, Burke, um, Corey Burke has been the only signing so far this year. There's not been any rumors yet, so I'm just stating the obvious here. Transfers, I will, you know, once we make a big name signing, which, Kira, what do you think about that? Do you think we'll make a big name signing this year? Well, I hope so, but. Well, the, all the fans hope so that we get a big name signing, but as of now on the transfer stage, we really haven't done too much. Re-signing Fabian Herbers, Fabinho, Elsinho, and um, Erica Ayuk. Erica Ayuk definitely could be a it's her fair player. Well, Erica Ayuk could definitely make a big impact to this year's squad. Uh, also, the signing of Herbers could um, also make a big impact as well. Corey Burke uh, has been signed from from Bethlehem, Jamaican uh, player, got a couple caps with Jamaica, he's, and he's actually a very good player, um, could back up CJ this year, um, definitely pretty good with him, I would not complain, it's definitely not a great sign, but th does he fit the Union's kind of where they want to go, I say so. So Corey Burke, welcome to the Union, and I think you'll get a couple goals this year. Um, next topic, the Union Awards 2017. Kira, yeah. what is the first one? What do you think was the game of the year? We asked you guys on Twitter, what do you think the game of the year was? We only received 12 votes on this one. 9% Union versus Colorado Rapids 2-1 uh, Union. That was the game where Harrisburg Union uh, curled in that beautiful free kick. Uh, Union versus Orlando 6-1. That uh, second place with 33% of the vote. But the big one was 58% of the votes. Kira, what was that game? Um, the Union versus New York Red Bull. Yeah, that was their first win of the year. 3 nothing win. Yeah. Uh, definitely a great game there. Yeah. The next award, poll 2. Player of the year. Two. So, we asked you guys on Twitter, once again, who do you think your player of the year was? We asked, was it Harris Medunian, Hunter Blake, or CJ Sapong? This one received 14 votes, and, um, it was between, it was really close, but, um, Medunian, 29% of the vote. CJ Sapong with 28, and Andre Blake with 43. Andre Blake, congratulations, Player of the Year. We had a trophy. We just like yes, we prevent, present you a trophy, but unfortunately, uh, Andre is not here to comp to claim his reward on his yes. plastic faces. Uh, Kira, number poll number three, offense uh, player, offensive player of the year. This is pretty obvious. It received yes. 15 votes, and 100% of it went to CJ Sapong. The options were CJ, Fafa, Elsinio, and this is obvious, meaning it's a palm. And all 100% of those 15 votes went to CJ. Yep. Next um, question, poll number four, Defensive Player of the Year. Who do you guys think that was? 16% of the vote. Uh, 16, this one received 16 votes. Jack Elliott received 44%. Fabinho. Sorry, Fabi. Zero. Sorry, Fabi. Uh, 56% of the vote went to Andre Blake. And congratulations, Andre, for receiving another reward. Can <laughs> bow down. Bow down to Dre. Hail Dre. Um, to uh, Word Dirty. The next award. Poll number five. And final award. Onion Bag Goal of the Year. Courtesy of Tommy Smith, ESPN. This is not a sponsorship or anything. Um... Kara, which one won that one? Um, 
That's Virginia James, James free kick. Against Colorado. Yeah. Definitely a stunning goal. Um, behind, trailing behind would be Ron Gilbert's long shot against New England uh, to seal the win there. Uh, Fabian Herbert's chip versus DC United also to seal the game on that one. Yeah. That one received 14 votes and 79% went to Medunjanin's free kick. Yeah. And that was it for the um, for the voting and awards. And um, there's one more question that we asked you guys, and it was, if there was one player on your holiday wish list, who would you want to suit up in the blue and gold? Leave your answers by responding. Uh, I told everyone not to go for Ronaldo and Messi, for we all know Jay Sugarman and Ernie are smart on how they approach transfers. So um, we got a lot of a lot of um, responses. Uh, Twelve plus responses. Uh, Sean Michael he responded saying Diego Valeri. I can get on board with that. Um, he's kind of old, but I, I like that. Um, did the Union win? He they responded with Lucas Podolski, one of my, my favorite players, a uh, German guy, powerful left foot, and he actually won the World Cup years back. Union Hulk uh, responded with Ronaldinho, but uh, we all know that's uh, doubtful. Doubtful. Peter Crouch, a English striker, um, relatively affordable. Stephen, I'm not sure if I can pronounce your name correctly, but Stephen Holoroid said Peter Crouch. Um, perfect for the unions, predictable outside in offense. Um, a guy, Matt, responded saying, I'd like to see the union take young Tottenham Hotspur players on loan. Starting the lines with Tottenham, Marcus Edwards, Cameron Carter, Vickers, Vickers, Shane Harrison, Gray, Guru, and, uh, some options there. I like that response. Uh, Ken at Gibson Kid one said Adam Mayer. Uh, that one's definitely been thrown around. Uh, the unions transfer it's a lot. Um, I could definitely see him being a good fit. Um, another person responded, Justin Miram, uh, gets goals and assists, very technically gifted too. Um, that's, somebody else said Ever Benega, uh, Argentine player, plays for Sevilla right now. Only 29, not a goal scoring number 10, but, uh, you know, lots of international experience. But um, I, I like that one. Uh, so I said Michael Carrick and Wayne Rooney. Nah, um, I can get on board with Carrick, not particularly um, Rooney. But I, I like everyone's responses, and uh, hopefully some of them will come true. And that, that's it for the online part of this episode. Hey, I'm John McCarthy, one of the goalkeepers of the Philadelphia Union. Watch Talk Dupe with Ryan. Now I would like to talk about recap. What went wrong, what went right in the 2017 season? Obviously, there are a lot of positives and negatives. Starting off with number one, positive. Um, we had many players score for the for the blue and gold this year. We had many players um, that were definitely capable of being on a good squad. Um, guys like Roland Alberg, El Sino, they showed glimpses of being great players. They, but they never really showed up and said, I'm going to be the number 10 on this team. I am going to, you know, push this team to victory. And unfortunately, uh, neither of them did that. And that really was the whole this year, the number 10. Um, number 10 was a positive and a negative throughout the year. Um, definitely did not have enough production from there. Tried out Bedoya at the beginning of the season. Did not work. Mm -hmm. Allberg. He was okay, like, definitely had some good glimpses of great number 10. Um, he had two goals against Montreal, and then he kind of just you know, fizzled out there. Then El Sino, he was tried out there. He did all right, and he kind of proved his decency for the rest of the season. He was definitely, like, he didn't show up sometimes for games. This kind of inconsistent. Both of them were very inconsistent. Um, then goalkeeper Andre Blake, Jack Elliott were f actually pretty sensational this year. Um, definitely keeping the defense probably kept the union in it more than the offense. However, you know, guys like Oguchi Onyewu, Fabinho, you know, right back was kind of consistent with Gaddis and Rosenberry. Um, yeah. then the offense, the Fafa, Sapong, they were definitely positive. 
So Fafa, Sapong, uh, Madunjanin, Bedoya, Blake, and Elliott are definitely players we want to build off of who had really good seasons this year, and hopefully they can uh, do good in 2018. Yes. Um, do you have any questions for me, for us about um, the 2017 season, what was good, what was bad? Um, hmm. There's a lot of questions you could ask about right, that. Right, um, so definitely, um, you know, we definitely had saw many sides of the Union. Sometimes they would get trampled by, you know, crummy teams. Montreal at home, that time they lost 3 nothing. Blair and Jamal, Jamal, I'm not really sure how to say that. Jamali, he played very great, very good that game. 3 nothing to Montreal at home. And that was really a game that if the Union won, they were creeping their way into the playoffs, but unfortunately that did not happen. And, um, yeah. and you know... But then we can't come out and beat a perfectly decent Orlando side 6-1. FC Dallas, 3-1. Like, it's just really inconsistent score lines that really made the Union kind of not make the playoffs this year. And that's really what went wrong and what went right. Playoffs, uh, the next question, playoffs, looking into 2018. As of now, looking at the roster, I would say no playoffs right now. But really, realistically, if the Union do sign a good number 10, Playoffs, I can see them in sight. Um, bold prediction, Union do make playoffs in 2018. I know I said that last year in the 12 days of Talk Duke, and the Union turned out to be a ninth place team. But um, preseason, coming up soon, January, it's going to be starting. Um, down in Clearwater, Florida, as usual. They'll have some sessions up in uh, Philly, usually an open training session if you guys want to check that out. Um that's about it on the preseason side. They'll have some games that you can watch on YouTube or um, online. So that will be that's coming up. It's coming faster than you really thought. Jay Sugarman, uh, next hot topic. Is he going to spend any money? That's what we're all asking. Is he going to spend any money on a number 10? I know I talked about this in the transfers uh, area, but he did come out and say that he wants to spend some more money on the team this year. Um, so... <laughs> that's definitely a positive, but we'll see how that plays out. 2018 lineup. That's what we're asking right now. Um, in goal, obviously, Andre. Left back. I think we're going to see Fabinho more and more this year. Center back, uh, Elliot, And we're, I'm assuming, Yarrow. But I'm feeling that we can might sign another center back. Right back, Keegan Rosenberg will back, win his spot back. Um, defensive midfielders. Bedoya and Majunjanin, a, a partnership that worked very, very well in 2017. Out on the wing, we're, we got Fafa, attacking the midfielder. That is where we're going to make a signing, hopefully. Right wing, hopefully in a signing, but I wouldn't mind seeing Herbers or Ayuk there. And Striker, obviously Sapong. And that's how the, the 2018 lineup, I think, is going to look. Um, happy holidays, everybody. I hope you enjoyed this video. Yep. Kira and I talking dupe. Yep. Um, I will make another video pr probably relatively soon uh, talking about transfers, talking about preseason. And uh, thank you guys for watching. I will see you next time. We'll talk to you Bye. Hey, I'm Fabinho. I watch this guy on YouTube. He's so funny. He's very good. Huh? <laughs> see? <laughs>